This is a film of um, my retrospective exhibition at the uh, Royal Cornwall Museum in Truro uh, in the year 2005. Uh, the work it covers 43 years, <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> of my work. Um, it begins with um, drawings I did uh, when I was uh, a young man. Uh, I grew up in Newquay and the um, uh, beaches and cliffs uh, were my playground and so it seems quite natural to me that they featured then in my work and still do feature in my work. This drawing I remember particularly, um, it, I mean a lot of, work of my work still just comes out of sort of messing around or making marks and then something will happen in my memory or something, it will trigger something and it'll, it will give the direction the painting is going to go. This, I remember struggling with this drawing, I was making black marks and so forth and I knew in a way there was something inside of me which uh, drawing away and drawing away and eventually this the image became, became the sea which it, it, you know, it, it had not been my intention in the beginning and I knew that I knew the result I knew as soon as I did it as, as though I brought something from inside and that, that image was important to me and it may not have any importance to anybody else at all but it does to me um, and so that's why I kept it that's why it's in its um, in this show um, and I'm not sure whether this one it, I I have a feeling that I did this on the spot and that it was done in a tremendous gale of wind and it was done extremely quickly um, because it was sort of, um, you know, that, that was quite, it was quite violent weather. Um, so um, this little painting uh, came from the first exhibition I ever had, um, which, was in, um, which was in Newquay. So I had, you know, even, even at that stage, at that stage of leaving art school, I had the idea of having, ex having my own exhibition. So that's the earliest painting here in the show. And that dates from 1962. Here is um, some work I did in Israel uh, where my wife and I went in 1966. Um, and we worked on a couple of different kibbutzes. Uh, we stayed there for about seven months until we were told to get out because of the 67 war coming. These two drawings, or two paintings, were made um, quite, you know, quite soon after we arrived on the first, uh, first place, and it was our room, and it had a curtain going across the, across the door, and a little grill, which was to let fresh air in and uh, keep the insects out, I guess. Um, but they, they, I was inspired to make these two paintings. <laughs> you can tell which one was done first, because in, in the second painting, uh, where the curtain is drawn across, the first painting, um, is on the wall there. This, this is um, this, the second, second good bits we went to and I, I drew the palm trees. Um, we were actually, uh, we were below the Golan Heights there and um, we were actually shelled by the Syrians from the Golan Heights and here in the, just in this foreground uh, there were huge um, uh, craters where the shells were made and we looked at the, the shrapnel and it was made in England which would have been reassuring if we'd been killed by it. Um, some animals were killed, but fortunately um, everybody scarfed down the uh, air raid shelters. But, um, and right after that event, um, we were told we could come out from the air raid shelters. And right after that, we heard this roaring of these uh, Israeli Mirage jets, and they went right across the top of the Golan Heights and uh, destroyed, the, um, destroyed the Syrian tanks. Um, but I, I remember being there, this was, this was the build-up to the 67 war, I remember being um, there going to work in the fields and um, my friends, the Israeli guys that we got to know, oh Robert, would you go <laughs> sit on the front of the tractor and look out for mines <laughs> as we go up this, as we go up this, um, this track. Um, so it's, it's not an occupation I particularly want to like, assure you, <laughs> but fortunately we didn't come across any mines. I later taught at Summerhill School and um, first of all I ran the workshop for a year. Following that I taught in the art room and uh, these are drawings I made of students there. Um, it was my way of teaching, very often I'd ask somebody to, to sit and pose for me and um, then others would come along and draw them as well. So we had uh, walls of uh, portraits by me and by various um, pupils. These blocks actually date from about the same period. Um, I had for a long time been interested in um, 
combinations of various patterns and I think that the, the patterns I arrived at for these blocks were, if you look say, at Victorian um, tiles, although they're very elaborate, um, they, the, the essential parts of them, the, the, the foundations of them, are, um, are, are quite, there's, there's quite a small number of ways of joining together and so forth. And um, so I think I've sort of got those in these blocks and they've made, um, I suppose it's a, in a sense it's a game. Um, I remember giving it to pupils at um, Summerhill and it'd be interesting to see the different sort of patterns that different people made. Some people who you realize, who you knew as being highly intelligent would come up with incredibly complicated designs. Um, so it was a sort of a, almost an intelligence test in a way, but it's not. You know, it's meant just to be a, um, an interesting thing. Just Summerhill, we came, to the, we came back to Cornwall um, I did a whole series of uh, black drawings, and there were drawings which were done as much with a rubber as they were with a, um, a black pencil. Fr from those black and white drawings, which were sort of intensely, you know, they came out of intense sort of scribbles and rubbings out, um, I then transferred that to, to, to using coloured pencils. And I suppose at the time, it was when I'd been offered an exhibition um, with a gallery in Bath, and I suppose the... Possibly the, 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 the being taken serious as an artist, I guess. Um, and also, I suppose, thinking that nobody would want entirely black and white work, uh, I started using coloured pencils. And this set of work evolved. Um, there is also another, there is also another um, thing going on behind them. It, they came at a period when I gave up teaching and uh, with our family of five children. Uh, I suppose that I was very conscious that it was me who was putting food on the table. And so I did, a, uh, for a while, I seemed to be obsessed with making um, paintings of uh, still life subjects of fruit and vegetables. In the 1970s, when we returned to Cornwall to live, I spent seven years fishing. Uh, this is inshore fishing, um, ca catching um, mackerel, uh, lobsters and crabs. Uh, in the summer, we'd spend the season fishing with crab pots, working off um, the North Cornish coast. These paintings um, relate to um, my fishing experience, particularly on the south coast, um, where we go in the winter for mackerel fishing. And uh, the little fleets, well, little fleets, there were huge fleets of boats. Um, the Cornish fleet would be fishing off, um, either fishing off Penzance and uh, Newlyn. Uh, or else around the, cor around the corner, around the lizard, we'd go around to, um, to Falmouth Bay and fish there. Um, but there could be as many as 400 boats at one time. And there were huge fleets of, uh, huge shoals of fish. But um, what was, to me, a, a really remarkable and memorable sight was to see the gannets diving on the shoals of fish. Uh, they really had um, an almost prehistoric feel about them. You, know, you were witnessing something which was um, you know, fundamental to nature. They, they, and I, I, I caught one once. It was, uh, I, I picked it out of the water because it had a load of fishing line around its legs and so we untangled that and put it back. But to look into that gannet's eye, <laughs> I still remember that. It, it really was a sort of um, an unworldly sort of look. You know, It wasn't like you're looking into the sort of eye of a cuddly bunny rabbit or a dog or a cat or something, you know, there was something really, um, something else there, you know. Um, but anyway, that, that painting is, and there, was, there, was a, there is a series of, um, of paintings of this subject, of these gannets diving, relate to my memory of that period. And probably there's, if you see, if that's 2001, um, I was fishing in the 70s and I thought, you know, really we're talking probably 25 years. Um, between the event and my making a painting of it. But um, such is the way, you know, such is the way that, that things happen in paintings. And uh, I think probably I will, I will also, I will probably return to, to paintings of that subject. Um, so it's the past mixed with memory. These paintings uh, are a theme which goes back to the period I left teaching and became a professional artist. And it is the light on the water um, I think we're talking of, in the late 80s, I started to make paintings of the dazzle on the water, 
And that it, somehow there was a meaning in that. I mean, I suppose that if... I'm not religious at all, but if, if there was a, such a thing as God, then I think that, that God would be in that dazzle somehow. Um, that sort of mysterious confusion of, of stuff going on. And I hope that I've... I hope that these paintings evoke feelings of more than just what is seen, but of perhaps of infinity or um, of our mortality, perhaps. Um, but there's um, just a little view from a, a little, well, you know, a view from the cliffs, you know, looking down on uh, on rocks and birds and so forth, and your eye gradually taken out to to passing shipping. It is memory and present mixed together. Susan and I go for a walk along a beach at Gwydion and um, Gudrivi, um, and uh, you'll see birds flying in the surf and so forth, but um, they're also connected with my childhood and my, um, my experiences there. Another little thing which comes into my, um, into my work, um, or has done lately, is um, passing gulls. You know, if you're aboard a, aboard a ship and um, a fishing boat or a ship, uh, you get sort of birds following you and so forth. And um, I, th these paintings relate to that. And um, they're, they're tricky things to paint, really. They just... Uh, I'm not a, an ornithologist or I'm not that sort of person that paints every feather on a, on a bird, and nor, nor could I on the air. Um, but, you know, they're part of the experience, of uh, part of the scene, the part of the things that you would see being at sea. And um, if we go around here, <coughs> it's all, there are also, um, uh, you know, when you're on the shore, I mean, I, 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 might, I imagine myself here in... Um, uh, a lot of these really are based on my memory of being in the Silly Isles and of birds passing as you're sitting there in the... Uh, on the edge of the water, and and, and quite it, it, that again is a quite. A, I talked about being alone in the desert, and I think that the the same thing here. When I was alone on in those places, and the sound of the sea and the birds going by, um, those those are you know those 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 are real experiences. Gorse is a subject which I return to time and time again. Why one would associate. Um, why I choose to paint you know, gorse or blackthorn bushes as opposed to other sorts of trees or bushes, I don't know, but um, I, th I think there's something particularly Cornish about um, gorse bushes. Um, and I guess that's sort of the energy that's in the, within the... St they're not trunks, are they? They're stalks or whatever you call it, branches. Um, I'm attracted to... Um, and the explosion of, uh, of flowers. I mean, at certain times, the gorse is always in, blo is always in um, bloom, um, but in the spring it becomes particularly so and can be, um, you know, really um, just a ma ma an amazing sight. Uh, talk about, you know, having a plan of what you're going to do in the day or whatever it is, um, is... Um, just sort of goes out of the window with me because I'll set off to do one thing uh, and just see something else. And uh, but when that, that, that's really good when that happens. But I remember with this, it's just a little series I did of foxgloves, which I'd often thought to myself, oh, I must paint foxgloves. Yeah, and then they'll, they'll be gone, you see, years will go by. But I do remember being on the Sillies, and you can see it's quite a gloomy sort of atmospheric day, and I'd be probably heading off to make a painting of, um, of the rocks and uh, the sea and so forth. Um, and I saw these forest serves and I said, no, Philip, I'll sit down and do this. And so I, made, um, I did a little series, I think it was, there were four of them, um, which I did right one after the other, uh, very quick paintings. The blackthorn trees, um, when they come into blossom, uh, are just blossom. Um, the hawthorn trees have leaves and blossom together. Um, I suppose if you think, well, why do I paint gorse, then... Um, there's obviously a similarity in the sort of twisted and angular nature of these, these um, trees. Um, and I suppose they represent a sort of like a, a, a wild sort of energy in them. Um, and I guess that's, that's why I'm attracted to them. But I don't really need to know why I'm attracted to something. You just, 
are and do it, you know, and that's, they become paintings. Um, but I've painted, you know, th that subject I've, I've gone back to and back to. And they were, they started being um, completely winter trees with, with no foliage on. Um, and recently, um, then you can see here one or two, it's beginning to be this time of the year and they're just coming into blossom. And over here, um, I mean, it's a few years separating these. They, they, they weren't done, you know, in sequence, and they weren't meant to illustrate, oh, the coming of the, the blossom or anything. But, um, and I would not, not have painted this, a, a tree in blossom, when I painted the, the bare trees. But more recently, I've started to paint trees in blossom. Um, so it's a part of a, you know, the development of the, the imagination, I suppose, or... Whatever is, going, whatever is going on. I talked about painting on the uh, Sillies, um, but it, it's not just the, the sea and rocks that I painted there, but uh, sometimes I'd be attracted by um, uh, other things, you know, the sort of landscape there. And one of the things which I have painted quite a lot is the lighthouse on, on um, St Agnes. It, it's a really lovely structure. It's got a really, uh, absolutely smashing proportions to it. Um, and of course, fulfilled a, a vital role. If you take the, um, uh, where that island is, um, as one approaches, the western approaches or coming across the Atlantic, um, there are these dreadful rocks, the western rocks. And um, this was obviously designed to stop ships going on the rocks, although, you know, for centuries many, many did. Um, if you look at the charts and the map of the wrecks, an enormous amount of ships went onto those rocks, and it must be absolutely dreadful. Um, so that's uh, that, that island, particularly. I don't know why. Um, I've been back to time and time again. This this is this this view where you get um, a bit of a channel between the um, between the island and then the the, the rock starting. I often think that in a, in, a, in a painting where you have one particular incident in the painting, one particular um, item, that there is an element of, uh, uh, that it is a self-portrait or something, it is a, that you can identify, this is, this, is, this is the artist somehow. So it just ships from my, imagination, my memory that uh, I might have seen at sea um, and ships in that, that dazzling light. Um, which is there all the time. In the, on, when, on the south coast, we get a little bit of the light on the water very early in the morning on the North Cornish coast, but on the south coast, of course, the sun is there most of the day. In 1997, I went with a Trinity House um, mm -hmm aboard one of their ships going around the, the coast. Um, uh, they, they go and service the boys and the lighthouses. And I went as a sort of um, resident um, artist aboard the ship uh, on a fortnight's trip. And um, we went from um, South Wales um, right down to, um, to the Sillies and then went back up again to um, North Wales and I made paintings each day of the things I saw. Um, and uh, that was a really nice experience. And um, these, these, th this section of paintings relate to those. This is in the Bristol Channel. Uh, it's a, a piece of land, a rock called um, Steepholm. And there was also another one called Flatholm. Um, and there was obviously a little um, painting of a passing ship there. But these have this remarkable colour that uh, is in the Bristol Channel, which is obviously made by the mud coming from the, um, from the Severn. These paintings are to do with the Channel Islands, and I've been um, a couple of times to Guernsey. Um, and this one, I was sitting on the beach making a painting um, and was struck by the swallows going by. One wouldn't normally associate swallows with a beach, but the seaweed, which had lots of little flies on it, um, they were flying by and catching the flies. So I think the, the idea of a swallow on the beach was rather nice. And this painting 
I remember distinctly making this, and I, I, in order to get the right position, I had to get down the cliff a little bit, and you can see I'm quite high up, and it's sort of, um, it was a bit, a bit, <laughs> bit hairy, so I, got, I quite like that painting. Um, and it was, again, one of these things which you, you have to do quickly, and you forget yourself, because you're in a bit of a desperate situation, and you have to make the painting, um, so you don't, you don't have time to, have self-doubts or worry about things. You just have to get on and do it. This, these are the paintings of Nantucket. Incidentally, they are, um, one is uh, 2000 and the other is uh, 2004. So um, it must have been in the year 2000 I went there first. And this was the one where, which I referred to as the Grey Lady, um, which Nantucket is, uh, its nickname is. Um, because off here you can see there is no horizon, but the mist is coming in. And there's wonderfully rich colours and uh, atmospheric feel to the place. And um, I did several um, on a recent trip, a place called Great Point. And um, I went for a swim in there afterwards. A section of paintings here which are to do with Greece, um, or Greek islands. Um, we have uh, a friend who has a yacht, who, um, and he's invited me a couple of times to sail across the Aegean with him. Uh, on this occasion, this island, um, Agathenision, um, we were sort of in the morning uh, anchored up. We arrived in the evening, we were anchored up. And I woke up early before anybody else and I scrambled up the, up the, uh, up the island and, uh, until I could hear these bells ringing and uh, came across these wonderful goats. And uh, you can see it's sort of very early in the morning because of the long shadows underneath the olive trees. These little paintings I really enjoyed because I... <coughs> They were on the spot, I mean, sort of, this is in roads, and um, we'd hired a car and driving around, and all of a sudden, you know, it is again, you know, what, what catches my eye, because I, my eye was caught by, you know, olive trees and uh, cypresses and so forth, and little bits of landscape. There is a, a Fra Angelico painting, which um, has, uh, I think it's a Christ doing something or other, and uh, various figures around him, but in, just in a small part of the background, there was a little bit of wonderful landscape, which this, that little bit reminded me of. Um, and this is another one where I sat down. I was on an island um, called Leros, and um, I sat down and made a painting of those, uh, those two palms, which are painted white at the bottom to stop the insects from uh, climbing up or eating or whatever, you know, to deter the insects. And there's another island beyond over here your attention to this little painting. <laughs> um, you know, here, here we have um, uh, tamarisk trees and uh, some little goats uh, just behind and so forth on the shore. But you see, where am I? You see, I, am actually, I was actually standing up to my waist in water painting this. And people have, um, you know, make a big thing about painting out of doors and so forth, but not many people stand up to their waist in water to make a painting. But I did, I did two or three paintings there like that. Um, but again, very rapid paintings, um, which you don't, you know, there's no time to, to have doubts about. You know, one has to do the, do the painting instantly. It has to, you have to be right first time. There's no, you know, no messing. Uh, another place where I, I, I really did enjoy being was California and painting, um, Palm trees. I remember my friend saying to me, oh, you're painting palm trees, aren't they a bit sort of passé? Uh, probably they were for, for her in California, but they weren't for me because I didn't, <laughs> they were new to me. Probably they've seen lots of paintings of palm trees over there. But I really enjoy, there's the San Gabriel Mountains behind and uh, these lovely palms. I think palms are such brilliant things, and so, well, to us, exotic things. Um, and here I was uh, sitting in the, um, in the gardens in um, Pasadena, and uh, just these um, peacocks wandering by, and the, a, a tree in blossom. Um, but uh, exotic, you know, just completely different to our experience in Cornwall. I don't know what it is about a desert, but there's something there, something which, which is extraordinary. Um, 
I mean, most people would sort of keep away from this, like that, but, um, or drive past. But just to wander in this in the stillness, in this ancient ancient feel to these places. I talked about painting um, the gannets diving when I was fishing in Cornwall. This is off Long Beach, California, um, off, Long, uh, off Long Beach, Los Angeles. And um, these are not gannets diving, but pelicans diving. And if you, if you come up close to a pelican, I mean, they are really antiquated and ungainly looking birds. And yet to see them in, their, in this uh, environment when they were diving, they became almost pterodactyls diving into the sea. Ancient feel about them. And there's also something else about this painting. Um, David Hockney uh, went to California and he painted his boyfriend diving into the swimming pool and he called the painting A Bigger Splash. Well, I call these paintings Making a Splash um, in reference to that, I guess. But, um, you know, because it's California and because it's birds diving, you know, various, and, and, and the reference to his painting. Um, so those things are all sort of tied up in that. Um, but that was, that was fun being there. A friend of mine has a nice sort of farmhouse out there and uh, he lives out in France. And uh, when I went to stay, I flew out. And so I wasn't driving, but he was driving me around, which I had a little tiny notebook. I made some little drawings of things as we passed them, little buildings or just little, little episodes in the, in the landscape. And so when I returned, I made this painting uh, from those little drawings and from my memory of being there. And this was another occasion I visited France, and um, we, it was Easter, and it was still quite cold and quite... Um, quite um, the trees had not come out anyway. Um, but I came across these trees alive with the birds. It was their, it was their town, you know, the bird, bird city there. Um, so those were French rooks um, having a nice time. Um, that's it.